to ET Now Startup Central, India's first and only daily show dedicated to startups and entrepreneurship. I'm Chandra Shrikant, joining you live from India startup capital Bangalore, and we have a power-packed show lined up for you over the next 20 minutes. I'm Krishna Kumar, coming to you live from ET Now's Mumbai studios. First up, let's take a look at all the headlines that we're tracking over here. In his first interview, post the mega $4 billion iGate acquisition, Cap Gemini's global CEO tells ET Now that the French technology giant will now look to leverage India's startup boom. It's been 10 years since Elion launched in India. It's top honcho Sanjeev Agarwal shares the fund's top hits and misses in the startup space. After cabs, autos and bikes, Ola now wants a share of the rickshaw market as its e-rickshaws take off in NCR. And in our special segment, Decode, Mohan Kumar from Norwest Venture decodes what lifetime value is and why startups should focus on this metric. Certainly a far packed show there, Krishna, but while Raghuram Rajan has been dominating every other bulletin today, we have a global voice to kick off eating our startup central, don't we? Absolutely, it's a big global voice in the IT space. French IT giant Cap Gemini's global CEO and chairman Paul Emelan. Ashwin Mohan caught up exclusively with the head honcho in his first interview post the mega $4 billion iGate acquisition. Emelan is betting big on the Indian manufacturing sector even as he looks to leverage the startup community to boost value for their large clients. Listen in to this big interview. Focus on India is a little more on the manufacturing and private sector today because this is where we find reference, where we can play a reference. Public administration is not internationally a group focus of Capgemini. Uh, maybe so. Let's not take any Indian concern only. Uh, public sector is probably a little slow in decision. There are big ambitions to create a digital footprint, but it's not our best domain. All right. Now, earlier in January this year, Paul, the U.S. government had tripled the H-1B and L-1 visa fees. And that was clearly a move that hit the Indian IT companies because it would impact the number of people that they would send to one of the largest markets, which is, of course, the U.S. India is the backbone of your group. As you said, you're reaching a point wherein almost half the headcount of Capgemini is Absolutely. from India. And therefore, considering the number of people that are employed by Capgemini India, how big a concern is this? The constant change in the immigration policy? Less for us. Why? Because, as you imagine, our origin is a Western group. So what we sell to our client are local people, Dutch people in Holland, American people in the US, be they from Indian or Korean origin, we don't care. But what we sell, contrary to the Indian competitors, is local service performed by local people plus the strength of the Indian talent pool. But we do not ship as many Indian people abroad as uh, most of our Indian friends do. So for us it's a concern but probably less so. But I think what is important is to keep a flow because for building talent our Indian oh. colleagues must address the client. They must travel, they must feel the client, and they bring something unique there that we need to cultivate. India is in the midst of an e-commerce boom, and here you're witnessing a scenario wherein you have several e-commerce players who are commanding astounding valuations, in some cases, perhaps even more than some of their listed peers. So we're looking at a scenario wherein there is a lot of innovation, there are a lot of exciting ideas out there. Uh, for an IT services company like Capgemini, uh, do you fear any sort of potential threat as far as disruption is concerned, especially on the product side? The beauty about technology is there are always young companies that emerge. They bring new energy, new disruption, and we need to bring them in the mainstream of the industry. That's why I think is our raison d'être, what the group has to do, which is why we partner with these new companies and we bring their knowledge to the large clients. Do you uh, plan to do the replicate this formula in India uh, extensively as we go ahead? I just say uh, today in this market today we are looking at Indian sprouts, young company, mm. 
By the way, we find them either here or in the US, and they are very active even in Silicon Valley, and to help them get into clients. I, mean, I don't think we should necessarily invest in this company, yeah. but we sponsor them to show to the client that we bring the best of value to our large clients. So basically the Capgemini formula would be to spot an exciting idea, uh, take it to the client and perhaps help them to scale up Absolutely. at a later stage. I just say to remain neutral, we do not invest in subs, so we show that we are totally neutral. We are ready to bring to our client the best thing we have found in the market. Krishna, I wonder if there's any multinational company or an Indian IT company that's you know not looking at the startup space. I mean, startups have so much to look forward to from these companies, but it will be interesting to see what strategy uh, Capgemini has in that space. You know, if they will set up a dedicated fund, uh, something that a Wipro has done, or if they will pick up strategic stakes. I think that's something we'll have to track going forward. But uh, moving on to um, our next uh, story, which is about one of uh, India's oldest venture capital funds. We're talking about. Helion Ventures, which completes a decade of investing in India. Um, as you know, some of their portfolio for, uh, firms include the likes of Big Basket, Yes Me, um, uh, uh, the likes of YLG, Muscular, and they're a very diverse basket. To really find out about the Helion journey this last decade, we're joined by uh, its uh, Senior Managing Director, Sanjeev Agarwal, on the show. Uh, Sanjeev, thank you so much for coming on ET Now Startup Central to really share the Helion journey. You know, take us through the last uh, 10 years and the key hits and misses according to you as a venture capitalist. This GDP growth that was going to switch to digital channels, that was one theme. Second theme was that India tech talent could create interesting products and services uh, which can potentially be uh, used for global markets. And the third theme is that some of the founding members of Helion were former uh, entrepreneurs and operating executives. We could be providers of not only capital, uh, but active help in building a company, having been through that journey ourselves. So I think those are the three uh, pillars on which Helion was uh, founded. And circa 2016, we, uh, uh, I think it's a sense of gratification that uh, many of these things have uh, played out uh, in the sense that we have been able to help develop world-class companies through this tenure, tenure, and I'll talk to you a little bit later about interesting companies that have emerged in our portfolio. So one, we've been able to pick many industry uh, cycles during this period. Two, we've been able to build companies across these themes that we had picked up. The theme for domestic demand going digital was around e-commerce and online. And theme for global businesses leveraging India talent was around enterprise software and outsourcing. And I think uh, we have very interesting companies in our portfolio across all these uh, sectors. Sanjeev, this is uh, Krishna coming to you from 18 Hours uh, Mumbai Studios. I wanted to ask you, tell us, you know, what is the most difficult part in terms of uh, partners uh, leaving, uh, say, over the last year or so, or was it something else altogether? Through this 10-year uh, period, we found that the internet uh, penetration took up a lot slower than what we had uh, envisioned. So I think uh, there was a delay in the consumer internet uh, pickup uh, relative to what our expectation was. Uh, and uh, that, that meant that a uh, lot of capital was deployed in companies that would take longer to fructify. Uh, and three, obviously, as you hi highlighted, uh, we do miss the colleagues who uh, left us. 
Sandeep, in terms of the kind of investments that Helion has made, you know, uh, you switched from consumer uh, 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 tech to uh, hardcore consumer ventures in the offline space, then you came back to tech. Do you think this, you know, back and forth in your strategy cost you to some extent? I mean, uh, some would say that you uh, caught the e-commerce wave late compared to, say, a Kalari or an IDG that Helion really missed out on investing in, say, a Flipkart and a Snapdeal. We at least have been investing in consumer internet since our beginning, Chandra. As I said, we were focused on two aspects, uh, consumer internet and uh, tech companies being built from India in Fund 1. And we had uh, Make My Trip and uh, companies like Redbus and Taxi for Sure uh, come up in that phase. We did miss the two uh, big companies that made all the waves, which is uh, Flipkart and uh, Snapdeal. But I would not say that that was due to uh, our focus on uh, non-tech, because we continue to do tech across all our three uh, funds. Uh, but you're right, in fund two, we did a little bit of more uh, non-tech. And we realize that uh, as a company, you always need to uh, do a little bit of experimentation, uh, that tech companies generate better uh, returns. All right, uh, Sanjeev, let the past be past and let the bygones be bygones. Uh, talk to us about your fourth fund, uh, which is in progress as we speak. We take a sector by sector view on what's coming uh, next. And at this point in time, we feel fintech is ready, uh, logistics is uh, ready as two big uh, industries that are getting uh, disrupted. Home services is another sector which is waiting to go uh, online. And, and, our, and our second belief is that uh, India's tech talent has really come of age. So new generation outsourcing companies, uh, we recently invested in a data analytics company called Extria. Uh, so there will be a lot of specialized vertical companies in the uh, analytics, mobility, uh, cloud arena that can be built leveraging India's talent. Sanjeev, you mentioned interesting sectors, but you know, we've noticed in the last year, most of the investments that you've made are mostly follow-on investments. Is that something that we're going to see over the next few months as well, that you know, you will continue to make follow-on investments in your existing portfolio and not uh, uh, so much new companies, because we're also in an environment um, uh, where the risk appetite has come down, more caution has seeped in. Will that be the strategy in the near term for Helium Ventures? That's a very good point, Chandra. I think our leaning would be to support our own companies first uh, because we are already part of those uh, companies, but we continue to selectively look for uh, new entities to uh, invest in. Uh, but you're right. Uh, we will do more follow-on and a limited number of new investments because we do have uh, a fairly large portfolio at this point in time. So this is a good period to do a little bit of consolidation. All right, uh, Sanjeev, before we let you go, quickly tell us, we have been hit with a brand new set of FDI norms as far as the e-commerce sector is concerned. Uh, tell us, uh, what is your take on what you've seen? Our first reaction is that uh, most of the entities in the e-commerce industry are compliant in their structure and uh, some new elements like 20% not being supplied by one supplier in e-commerce marketplace is actually in a way validation of a marketplace because marketplace by itself means a diffuse number of uh, suppliers. So my first reaction is that I don't think it has any uh, material negative or positive impact but as I said uh, we have to look at the fine print um, before we can give you a more informed view. 
that's an important reaction coming in there from Sanjeev Agarwal considering uh, their portfolio companies include the likes of Big Basket. Yet me, Big Basket still a bone of contention. So we'll really have to see how that pans out going forward. But uh, Sanjeev, thank you so much for talking to us on ED Now Startup Central. And we will keep a close tab on uh, the companies that you're investing in going forward. But uh, moving on, Ola is in news again. And this time, because after cabs, autos and bikes, Krishna, they also want to buy of the rickshaw space. So they have uh, uh, piloted over 5,000 e-rickshaws uh, in the national capital region. And uh, they are confident that this is going to be a lucrative opportunity for them going forward. Um, uh, ED Now's Krishanu Mukherjee caught up with the uh, Ola COO. Let's listen into what he has to say on this latest bet that they've made. The fact that a cab can travel between uh, anywhere between Delhi and NCR as against an e-riksha which will have a restricted geography. And second is the use case. While micro is at 6 rupees, but the base fare uh, promotes more longer rides in micros and the use case for autos or e-rikshas is, is very different where you just want to have a short travel which where this would be cheaper regardless of being at 8 rupees versus a 6 rupees micro. Right. So there has been noticed that both you and Uber, you're coming out with services and going into areas that haven't been explored so far and were being explored by other apps like Uber's come out with their motorcycle service, now you're coming out with e-rickshaws. Is it, is it more to do with getting more modes of transport or is it just hitting out at each other because they got motorcycles, you need to get something else? It's all about providing more convenience uh, at an affordable price because there's a need out in the market. We see a lot of demand on the platform and presently we have a huge appetite so provided if we just increase our supply by 50%, we can absorb all the demand that we have on the platform, which will further increase the demand. So the basic need is, is that of a supply, and I think e-riksha would be a major step in that. And as a platform, uh, the intent is to aggregate whatever can help you travel from point A to point B legally, and that's where we are, and that's how we started with e-riksha. Right, so what I understand is currently you have around 5,100 e-rikshas to begin with. Uh, and there's been a lot of talk about Uber catching up to your share. Do you think this will get you to uh, get some market share back from uh, Uber that you've lost over the past uh, few months? I don't think we have lost market share to Uber. <laughs> Uh, but uh, like I said, this is more to focus on the on the cities in the in the rural markets where 75% of our population is, roughly about 60% of our population is, and that's that's more to create value there, create a use case there than to compete with our competitors. Right. One last question, I will, and I won't let you go without an answer yeah. to that. The thing is that uh, you and Uber, you the market leaders, one and two. There there have been lawsuits filed by both of you against each other. You've taken matters to court and gotten into what people are calling a dog fight. Mm -hmm. Do you think this is good for competition? Do you think this is good for the industry? The, the level of fighting that you've gotten into, which people uh, are calling dog fights and street fights now. I would not like to comment on that, honestly, but uh, I think it's, it's more of creating more distractions around things. And I think we would like to focus on, on, on the core proposition, the value that we create to consumers and to driver partners. All right, Chandra, time now to go take a ride away from the e-rickshaw and on to our special segment today, which is Decode, where an expert voice helps us demystify a buzzword. And today, we have a venture capitalist, Mohan Kumar from Norwest Venture Partners, to help us decode what customer lifetime value means. This is relevant for both consumer internet and SaaS companies. Listen in. Let's say you go spend some money either through search engine marketing or put field sale people, go talk to a customer. You try to acquire the customer to be a paying one. Okay? So let's say it costs X amount of money, X amount of rupees to acquire the customer. Now, once you acquire, what does the customer do? Is he, is he, he or she doing one transaction? Or let's say he's buying one mobile or is she coming and buying mobile repeatedly every six, nine months? or in the case of airline ticket, once you acquire a customer, is she or she coming and buying repeat tickets or repeat hotel bookings, and for how long? Okay. So I really would like to have is, once you acquire a customer paying through different channels, you want the customer to be for a life, for a lifetime to be with you. Okay. Now obviously, nobody, nobody is with you for the lifetime. Okay. So Lifetime value is how long the customer is with you once you acquired them or once they've made the first transaction with you, it's called the lifetime value. Okay? Typically in industries, it varies between two years to five years. Okay? 
it's a, a typical period. Why this is very important is you, you normally don't make money on the first transaction. Let's say you paid 100 rupees to acquire a customer, okay? And they buy a product worth 500 rupees from you. The gross margins on the product may be 10%, okay? Which means 50 rupees. So you paid 100 rupees to acquire the customer, but you made only 50 rupees on gross margin, so you made a loss, okay? But if the customer comes second time and buys another 500 rupees, now you have break even because the second time you get another 50, now you paid 100 and the customer paid you back in profit 100. The cust now what happens after the second time? The third, fourth, and fifth time, the common customer comes and transacts with you, you make more and more money. Okay. So higher the longer the lifetime, the higher the number of frequency, the more profitable the customers are. Okay. So that's, the, that's why L LTV is very important, both in consumer phasing and in SaaS. Lifetime value is something that startups in consumer space and the SaaS space certainly need to keep tabs off mm. because that's your key to getting more bang for every buck that you spend. But with that, we come to the final segment of the day which is number crunch. And the number we are crunching for you today is 11.5 million. Now that's a mind-boggling number because that's the total number of document files uh, that's uh, been uh, leaked as uh, part of the infamous Panama Papers from uh, the law firm Mossack Fonseca and a team of journalists from over 80 countries worked together in the last year to really, uh, you know, disclose who holds offshore entities. I mean, Krishna, you know, in an era where people like to rubbish uh, paid media, they use terms like prostitutes and what not. I think this itself is a statement on the impact journalism can bring. Of course, the jury is still out on, you know, whether all people holding offshore entities have done something wrong. But this disclosure will go a long way in really correcting the wrong perception that journalism seems to have, at least among internet trolls. Chandra, I was wondering what to say about this, but you just hit the nail on the head. If at all, anything the Panama Papers goes to prove, it's the power and the impact that journalism can make to uncover the truths that uh, most of us wouldn't like to know after a point. So that's what the Panama Papers prove. Apart from that, I'm not willing to say anything at this point. As you rightly mentioned, the jury is still out. So much has been said on social media already. I'm going to hold my peace on this one. But with that, we wrap things up here on this edition of uh, 18 Hour Startup Central. But don't go anywhere. Keep watching 18 Hour. Coming up next is Market Watch. Find us on Facebook at facebook.com slash etnow and don't forget to click the like button. You can also follow us on Twitter at etnowlive. To stay updated with all our programming, hit the subscribe button on our YouTube channel by logging on to youtube.com slash user slash etnow.